You can multi-select. We use the out of the box form. We've added a, a combo box here and we added a label. And on the card, we updated using the save, the save button, we just submit form. And hey everyone, this is my SharePoint questions and today I wanted to show you how to convert a single line text to a combo box or a drop down using the out of, out of the box form uh, in Power Apps. So right now I'm using a patch statement. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of my patch statement uh, information here and I'm just going to use a form. So this form is going to be in edit mode and I'm going to connect it to my SharePoint list. So I have a SharePoint list called events. I can show you the SharePoint list. The SharePoint list is pretty basic. It has event name, date, and then a few more fields. Each one of these fields is a single line text. Now what I m recommend most people in Power Apps, especially beginners, is in your data source, always use single line text, numbers, or dates. Don't limit yourself to choice fields in SharePoint. Don't limit yourself to lookups in SharePoint. You can do all of that on the Power App side. As soon as you start creating SharePoint lookups, you're going to run into delegation issues. It's, you're going to be, it's going to be harder to code. It's going to take you a longer time. Use single line text fields in your SharePoint data source. I'm not turning it into a combo box or a drop down here in SharePoint. But on Power Apps, I can do that. So I'm going to remove the attachment web part. And for event type, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the entire form. Once I have the entire form highlighted, I can go to the fields and edit fields. Now, if I were to edit any of these cards or the, the columns, it's, this is not going to work. You're going to have to delete it and re-add it. So once I click on fields and click edit, I can go to the event type, drop down, and change it to allowed values. Once I do that, it converts the event type into a dropdown. Right, so this dropdown now uses the parent allowed values. So what we want to do is change that. And to do that, we would go to advanced and unlock it and change the values to, well, let's say business, uh, commercial, and we'll say social. So I just have three options right now. What I want to do is new form, change my form to a new form when I navigate. So on my new event, I'm actually going to uh, navigate to my event screen and set it as a new form. So now I have a new form and you can see I actually have a blank value and I have three choices. So I can go ahead and change my save button instead of a patch statement to just submit form. Now I didn't rename my form just for the for the video purposes but I would recommend renaming your form. So now if I came in here and had an event name uh, 123 ABC and just typed in a few options and hit save you will see on the SharePoint side that I have written a new line in my SharePoint using the drop down. So here in SharePoint, if we actually go to the list settings of this SharePoint list, you'll see this is just a single line text for event type. But in Power Apps, we have converted it into a drop down and we've even allowed for blank values. Now, let's say we wanted to do a combo box. So let's say event type can be multi-selected. Now there's many different ways you could do this, but for me, the simplest way is I'm going to delete the either a text box or drop down here, and I'm going to input, I'm gonna make sure I've highlighted this card. I wanna make sure I'm in the card, and I'm gonna input the combo box. In the combo box, I'm gonna say, the items are the same as before, so let's say business. I can't remember exactly what I wrote, but enterprise. 
think it was commercial before, and social. So I have three different choices. But if you notice, I still have some red marks here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the XY value here to get rid of that red mark. Now for the update. Now if I were to come in here and select multiple and try to update, it's going to write some gibberish in SharePoint. What I want to do is make this a little bit bigger, add a label. So we're going to add a label inside the card. Inside this label, what we're going to do is we're going to concat concat the combo box. So this my combo box is named combo box two. The selected items dot value. No, just just the selected items, and we're going to do comma value, and then comma, and we're going to use the separator of a comma quotations comma in brackets. So now you can see, I'll add a little space in there, that our label actually says both of our selections. So if we were to select all three, you can see that our label then shows all three. So I'm just going to write this to SharePoint. So in my update field, what we're going to update, so in the card we still have a red squiggly, there's an update property. What we're going to update is the label. So my label actually is uh, label 23, whatever your label is, and you should rename it. Label.text. That's what we're going to update when we save. So we'll go ahead and test out a new one. New test. I'll select a date. The building name, new test building, just so we know that this is new. It's on 123 new test and the zip code is here. I'm going to hit save. And now when we go back to SharePoint and we view the list, you'll see that I now have in my single line text field all three options that were selected. That's all I wanted to show you. This question came up. I'm going to keep building this app out, but I wanted to show you very simple, easy ways to do things. So now that we have a new event and a new form, we can multi-select. We use the out-of-the-box form. We have added a, a combo box here and we added a label. And on the card, we updated using the save, the save button. We just submit form and boom, we're done that entire form. So thank you guys for watching. This was a quick one. I want to make things easy for you, tell you how to do things easily. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'll have a new video next week.